where is everything well welcome everyone welcome to another fine edition of the making waves mindset show it is it's been way too long <laughs> it has been dave but for good reason it's it true been it's a little true. too long <laughs> it is good reasons but i i miss it i miss mm -hmm. talking to people i miss I miss having conversation with you and mm -hmm. spreading our journey and discussing things and moving things and shaking things. <laughs> you were at the La Bamba line of the yeah. <laughs> with the gym. Everything shakes. I hear you. Well, if this is your first time listening to the Making Waves Mindset Show, this is where we come together to share the journey that Dave and I have been on in the entrepreneurial space, and more importantly. That journey has a lot of downs and there are ups. So yep. despite what social media wants to show about everyone driving Ferraris, Dave, by the way, I think that's my dream car. I've decided, um, you know, there is a lot of hard work to get there. And both Dave and I have shared in the past two years, a lot of downs, but mm -hmm. things will get you to the up. So welcome Definitely. to our show. It's leadership, it's mindset, and it's about holding yourself accountable to get to the next level. It's about resiliency, I think, Dave. Resiliency. I think so. You know, and yeah. I think it's it's about dreaming and following through with those dreams. Yeah. And thinking bigger picture, looking at everything from the top of the world down mm -hmm. and just Taking trying to time. move yeah. forward. Continuous Absolutely. motion. Yeah. Right. If you're subscribed to us, thank you very much. Thanks for following along and sticking along. I know it's been a while. And we are getting back into the swing of things like we do always. There are a lot of bumps in the road to entrepreneurship and fitness and everything else that you're trying to strive for. So if you are following us and you have subscribed, thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed, please click those buttons. Subscribe on the podcast. Very, very much appreciated. And we are on multiple platforms as well. So if you do enjoy the show and you've even enjoyed the episodes, share them. That's the best way we can get some feedback from what we're doing. Share, share, share. And if you don't like an episode, share it with someone anyways, because they might enjoy it and they might learn something. If you have learned something, please keep those reviews coming. It's good to hear from people and see what your journey is taking you to and from and where you are with your lives and how you are with your journeys. We don't know everything. But we know what we know and we know what we've learned. And it's been a great process. We're enjoying it so far. Well, as as some would say, we don't want to be the smartest person in the room. We want to find those smart people out there to help us learn. You know, that's why we read books. That's why we talk to guests and learn sure. from their stories. Because uh, without experience from others, we would just be that uh, bump on the log going by the mm -hmm. station every day. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting. I, we were... Um, so in, in our business, we take our staff out once a month for dinner. We treat them to a nice dinner and all paid for by the company and just to get their spirits and camaraderie. And I love that. Yeah, getting everyone together. But it's it's funny what you can learn about yourself when it comes to different industries. And I am blessed to have reinvented myself into a new industry, healthcare. Good for you. And it's it's so refreshing to come into an industry where you see people in a different light. You know, being in law enforcement was a great profession, great people. I had great memories, met a lot of interesting, interesting people. And it's so refreshing to be in an industry where it's different. Yeah. It's different. It's not about criminals. It's not about bad people, good people. It's about fixing people and helping people and moving people forward and encouraging people to find their goals and dreams. And it, it ties really well into our Making Waves mindset because yeah. it's everything we do at Stretch Lab and the other businesses we have, it's to improve people's lives. And it's been a great process to learn from people who have been in that industry for years some of our employees have been doing this type of work for 15, 20 years and to learn off of them and experiences that they've gone through and what they know and who they know and 
uh, the kind of connections that they have in the industry who bring knowledge to the table and just to sit back and listen to people and their stories about the kind of experiences that they've had in this industry over the last 20 years goes along with a lot of my stories where I have yeah. stories for 20 years of law enforcement, but it's just different types of stories, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's so fascinating to hear from people. And I feel like in the law enforcement world, we're almost in a bubble. hundred percent. In, in relation to who you talk to, who you trust, you have a hard time trusting people because, yeah. you know, nine out of 10 people that you deal with when you're working are trying to lie to you or give you not lie, but mistruths, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, a, it's a nice to say way of lying, but it's, they're not in, always intentionally lying. They're mistruths, right? You, even if you, you go to give someone a ticket, they're not going to tell you the whole truth, right? Because they want to get out of the ticket or yeah. you go to speak to someone. The first thing they think is you're, they're going to be in trouble for speaking to them because you're in law enforcement. So, whereas when you speak to someone as a human, in this industry where the goal is for them to get better in whatever aspect that they are having in life, whether it's fitness or if it's an injury or if it's just general wellness to their body, they're telling you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And yeah. they're being brutally honest with you because yeah. they have no choice but to, otherwise you won't be able to get to the end result that they want to get to. Yeah. Such a rewarding feeling, though. It is. It is. You know? It's you know, just small little stories you hear every day from from the studio that uh, that we own, and just people coming in saying, you know, I wasn't able to touch my toes until now. Right. I wasn't I wasn't able to walk up a flight of stairs without my knees hurting. I you know I'm I'm able to pick up my child and uh, my grandchild and my child and my back doesn't hurt anymore. Stuff like that, where you're just like. Yeah, I know what it feels like to be in pain and I know what it feels like to not be in pain and to to have an effect on people's lives in that way has been so rewarding. And, you know, don't take it away from law enforcement where you do have rewarding moments, right? You you help someone who has been assaulted or you save someone's life, giving them first aid or something like that. Uh, you find a lost child or you're able to arrest somebody who's a bad person, yeah. right? You know, those, those are rewarding moments, but I find that it's a different type of rewarding moment. And there's more of them in this industry, the healthcare industry, rather than it, that I had in law enforcement. I could probably count the amount of times in a small little book, uh, as opposed to now I find it's almost daily that there's these little wins in people's lives that come to our attention that I'm just like blown away with. I want to go back. There was a story you were telling me maybe a month ago about, and you know, we, we talk about policing a little bit because that's where Dave and I came from. And it has a relevance in the show because we left something that everyone would say we were crazy to leave. You know, the, the promise of a pension and great benefits. I'll tell you right now, not really so good. Okay. So, but it ties into a very credible story where that bubble is there. And you were sharing about running into a sergeant who kind of felt maybe he was God's gift to the earth. And we've all shared very similar stories to this, where in that profession, sure, you might be God's gift to the earth, but in that profession, nobody cares that you're a supervisor, a sergeant outside of policing. Zero. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the quicker you realize that just because you are running your life in policing on a title, uh, does not transfer over to real life experiences mm -hmm. outside of policing. Mm -hmm. People don't care who you are. They don't care you're a police officer. They don't care you're a sergeant. They give zero Fs about that job and about yep. that title yep. that you put yourself around. And, you know, it's it's eye opening. And I think you were sharing in that story, too, that individual was taken back. Mm -hmm. They were shocked by that statement. Yeah, because nobody cares. Yeah. The world outside of policing is so grand, so freeing, and mm -hmm. so open that you can do anything you want to do. And that's why Dave and I believe in dreaming bigger, making waves. You got to splash around in order to take action. You have to rustle the feathers. But in that space, it's just, it's a silo and people get trapped in there. So for Dave and I leaving that and realizing that there's so much more out there, it's been rewarding and it's actually helped us accelerate where we want to go. And yes, we've had setbacks, but, um, it's the journey, it's the stories, it's the small things like you hear mm -hmm. from your customers that you've made a difference in my life that you go, wow, 
yeah, it's freeing. You, <laughs> you know, it's very interesting. If you don't travel, my, I would encourage you to start traveling the world because you learn so many things when you travel outside of Toronto specific. But then mm -hmm. if you travel outside of North America, you learn so many things. For example, we have a bad habit of this here in North America that I've noticed. And you don't notice it until you actually concentrate on it. Whereas when you meet somebody for the first time, it's, hey, how are you? I'm Dave. Nice to meet you, Tom. What do you do for a living? Yeah. That's the question, right? Yeah. Nine times out of 10, you go to a party, you go somewhere, you meet someone. Hey, how you doing? It's your name and then your job. That's right. I went to Mexico recently, Mexico City, met a whole bunch of people there. Not once did any of them ask me, what do I do for a living? Really? Not once. It's interesting. Nobody. I thought I thought you were going to say they were outside of Toronto, Canada, that people were really genuinely interested. No, they're generally interested in who you are and what and what you're about. Oh, interesting. It does not matter to them what you do for a living. That's very it is not a topic of discussion. I met multiple people. There are a few exceptions to the rule, obviously, but mm -hmm. I met multiple people who I don't know what they do. Didn't really care what they do for a living. Had a great conversation with them. Enjoyed my night. And that was it. It's perfect. It's all you need. What people what should care about who you matter? are as a person, and that's, right? Versus... And that's what I'm, and that's what I'm getting at is, it's better to be a good person than it is to be have this title on you of who you are and what you're about. Someone said to me a long, long time ago, "Who are you?" And the question is, "Who are you?" When you ask, I would say, if you ask five out of ten people, "Who are you?" They're not gonna, they're not gonna say that they're a good person, family person. You know, they have a loving marriage. They have, you know, children. Beautiful. They're gonna say. My, their name, their profession, and then they're going to go down that list. Yeah. We take a lot of pride in what we do, which is a good thing, right? We take pride in what we do for work, but there's no individuality anymore. Yes. It's I'm a X for this organization, then I am a person after. Do you think people are embarrassed to to kind of have that because it goes into to further discussion? Like they don't want to address what it is they do? I think it I think what it does, it's not it's not they're embarrassed in what they do. I think what it is is they put more emphasis on their job as a status symbol. As an rather identity. Than, yeah, rather yeah. than that they're a great person. To me, meeting people nowadays, like I, I was definitely in a different mindset years ago. And I would I would introduce myself and people would say, Hey, who are you? I'm Dave Moskowitz. What do you do for a living? And then I get into that conversation. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I followed through with it, but it was almost, I almost had to indoctrinate myself out of that yeah. and, and convince myself that it's not important anymore. I don't, I don't care if you are a good person and you can carry a good conversation and your views align with my views. And just like Dustin said on our show, your vibe <laughs> is your tribe or your That's tribe right. is your vibe. That's right. Um, if you if you can carry a great conversation and have a good conversation with me, what does it matter at the end of the day what you do? Hundred percent. I think it sometimes really doesn't. it really does. It not doesn't. Matter. I Especially think, in a social yeah. setting, um, if you're in a work setting and you're having a conversation about work for work, maybe. Yeah. But even then, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. I, I wonder if people do that to have a status, as we said, but it's more to kind of elevate where they align with that next individual. And I think for you and I in our journeys, and we've met so many, you know, very influential, very affluent, very successful people. The one thing that we've even actually our guests, I want to take a step back, even our guests, the most successful guests that we've had on, they don't judge Dave and I because we are new to business. It's those most successful individuals who are willing to go out of their way to share their stories with you, to help you, and to lend knowledge where you need it, to give yeah. you the advice. Whereas you kind of look back at, at the previous life, it's a competition of, well, it's the rank, right? It's, it's where they fall in the spectrum and how you align with that spectrum. In the business space, outside of that, it's very different. And, and people don't, uh, people don't get into that. They don't, uh, you know, not this and that it's yeah. no, like, what can I help you? Hey, I've done this before. And this is what I, I suggest you could try and do. You know, if mm -hmm. you have it, here's my number. How can I help you in the future? That's, 
that's what I love about business so far. It's the entrepreneurial success. I, I had a, a, a conversation this past week with somebody in my industry in the US and they were all about, Richard, you have a space in my home come on down, spend time, learn with me. And when you got some base knowledge on this new area, boom, bounce out to your area and get going. And it's like, wow, like That's you don't see that in the nine to five. It was yeah. just so heartwarming to have an open invitation to head down to, to the U S for that. But that's, that's the space and people yeah. aren't judging you on, that's you know, right. your title, yeah. you know, you're new, you're old, you're this, who cares? It's, I'm going to help you. I want you to succeed because oh, together, very much so. together, we can build more than you on your own. Yeah. I spend, I spend probably two to three hours a week assisting other franchise owners. Good for you in the industry who are just starting out. So yeah. for those of you who are first time watching our show um, or listening to our, our podcast, I own uh, myself and my wife own a business called stretch lab. It's one-on-one -on -one assisted stretching. It's here in Toronto. We were the first, franchise owners in Canada to open up. Um, it is growing very fast in Toronto and Canada itself. It's been a franchise around since 2015. It's grown immensely over the years. It is worldwide now. There's over 400 locations in the United States. There's a location in Mexico. I recently just got to visit, which was <laughs> uh, awesome. Photo. It was the first really cool. first ever stretch lab in Mexico City. Wow, which was an amazing. It's it's such it's so cool to travel to another city and see a different uh, aspect of the business that you're involved in and and be able to relate to it. Uh, it was very similar to law enforcement, which was nice, right? You go on vacation to law in in law enforcement when you're on vacation, you end up obviously looking at uh, police cars and, looking, and bumping yeah, into a, yeah. someone in law enforcement, you have those conversations. So it's very similar to that aspect, but it was really cool to see this type of business and, and speak to them. But I spend, my original point was uh, saying is I spend at least two or three hours a week speaking to other franchise owners who are behind me in the journey and giving them advice on what I've learned and what I haven't learned. But I also, likewise, I also reach out to franchise owners who are above ahead of me who have been doing it for a couple of years and find out what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. And it's that community involvement. And it doesn't matter where you are statistically in the franchise, people will still give you information. And even if you're, you know, there is a, um, there's a list that our franchise sends out once a week with, um, you know, a very transparent company. They send out the revenues of every studio, the amount of members they have, and uh, they rank rank them based on net revenue. And so you get to see who's succeeding, who's not succeeding. Uh, but I wouldn't say not succeeding, but uh, not doing as well as the others. Uh, there's some doing more than well. And a lot of plays into it. It's not just based on money. It's based on demographics 100%. and where they are located in the world and stuff like that. But it's very transparent to that because... It gives the ability for a studio that's maybe not doing as well as another one to reach out to those ones and say, hey, what are you doing? What's your secret sauce? What, do, what are you doing a little differently than I am? So I spend a lot of my time because we were the first in Canada speaking to other franchise owners who are getting into this franchise. So there's a whole bunch more coming to Toronto and others around, across Canada. There's one in Calgary opening. There's one in Winnipeg opening. There's some in Vancouver opening and more across uh, Ontario, actually. So it's good to speak to those people and, and get motivation and, and throw ideas back and forth. And it's really refreshing. It's, it's such a niche industry, um, but it's worldwide. So it's not so niche, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it flows into the healthcare world, which is really cool. And I've been learning so much from other people in this world who have been in this world for like 20, 30 years. Have you thought about creating an ebook or, you know, maybe a LinkedIn article, maybe once a week about top three things I've learned in this particular franchise to kind of raise awareness? Because you're, you're a teacher, you're like me, we like to help people, we like to mentor people. So I'm wondering if that's something that maybe you may consider to do is just have like a five chapter ebook, the top five things that you should consider for opening your franchise and or a stretch lab location and just be the voice, just be the voice. Right. Who cares? So there is, there is, which was, I, I, I don't do it 
as uh, structured as that. But what I do is there's uh, Facebook groups ah, specific perfect. for <laughs> owners of, yes, of yeah. Stretch Labs. So I'm constantly on there and owners are talking almost every day on there. And then there's another group I just joined. It's franchise, just franchise owners. Okay. Doesn't matter what franchise you're in. It's everyone's franchise in owners. Everyone's in it. And people are constantly messaging on there. Plus, I'm providing information on there. And it's it's a, such a cool community because no matter what franchise you own, doesn't matter if you own food, doesn't matter if you own industry uh, like B2B or B2C, mm -hmm. doesn't matter what kind of business you own. If it's a franchise, you're going to have similar issues. Just for anybody who doesn't know what B2B is, yes, business to business, and then business B2C to business. is business to consumer, the customer, right? So just in case anybody is unfamiliar with that lingo, there are very specific areas that those types of uh, things fall into. So um, so that's exciting, Dave. Like that's, that's an yeah. incredible opportunity and outlook on on, <clears throat> on life in the business space and, and how we can help and leverage people. So that's why we love our show and we want to share what we know. Yeah. Are there any downs that have come across um, – Maybe the last actually since the last recording has anything because we had we had weekly publications here, um, but you and I are both consumed in a lot of things right now. So there might be a few things that we can share and kind of give value for mm -hmm. a listener. And I have some things I can address. Maybe there's something on top of mind that we can share about how you instilled the resiliency and made it through that pivot, yeah. you know, that that did, <clears throat> I should say. You got to schedule yourself. There, there's so many things happening with opening up a franchise, especially brick and mortar. So the first journey that I took was um, into a brick and mortar business, franchise business. And when I say brick and mortar, I mean actual physical location. Building out a physical location, there's a lot of things that you have to adhere to when it comes to getting permits, getting signs, getting your contractor ready, getting your lease signed, getting your location of interest signed and negotiating all that stuff and getting lawyers and accountants. And there's a whole slew of things that checklist that you have to get through. So making sure you're scheduled throughout your day, your week, your month is very important. My Google calendar has become my parent. <laughs> <laughs> it tells it's me so where true. to go. It tells yes. me what to do. It yes. reminds me. I don't have to keep it up in my head anymore. I don't need to remember. I wake up in the morning. I look at my schedule. It's all there. If it's not in my schedule, it doesn't stay not in happening. my brain. It doesn't. I don't remember it. There's days where I'll get, you know, I'll be doing financials, for example. I'll be doing financials for the business and I'll be running deep into my computer, ba, 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 ba. you're typing away, typing away. And then all of a sudden, boom, pops up an alert reminder. I'm like, oh my God, I have a meeting in 30 minutes. I totally forgot. The more you can take away from your brain power of remembering mm -hmm. things like that, the more you can focus on other tasks. So that's one thing I've learned is if it's not in my Google calendar, it doesn't stay in my brain because I don't need it to. There's so many tools out there now like Google Calendar that you can use so you don't have to take up that brain power. I can focus in on other things. So let's break that down even deeper because I know someone out there is probably like, well, what do you mean everything's in the calendar? Um, let's say you're at an event and somebody wants to meet with you. And I saw you do this in person and I yeah. loved it because you were able to grab that individual and said, right now, Let's open our calendars and put yep. the time in versus allowing somebody to go on to email later and get back to you and things don't go in. So I know it's maybe sounds very boring, but there are people out there who don't understand like, well, when do you put it in? Do you get it done right there? How do you do it? Like yeah. you even mentioned something with alerts, which I like. Are you purposely setting 30 minutes alert before every single avenue or are you adjusting for travel? Like all these little things people are wondering. Yeah. So, so. We'll go to your first comment. First, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I'm when I'm in person and I'm speaking yeah. to someone and they say to me, let's do it, I stop the conversation and say, grab your calendar, let's do it right Perfect. now. Yeah. Because if you don't, what I've noticed is people will say, people will say to you, We should get together. We should do this. We should, we should, we should. Okay, we should. You're right. Let's do it right now. Yeah. Call them out on it. Yeah. Because do they actually intend to follow 100%. through with it? Are they going to remember to do it? Yeah, a lot of people true. are like, oh, I'll, I'll yeah, um, let's let's have a meeting on this. Okay, let's 
put let's it do it. Schedule. Put let's it in the books right now. Yeah, do it right now. The other thing I've I've started to do is not only do I, because the virtual world is amazing. Um, if you embrace it, it's really good. If you you know look at us, we're sitting in two different cities right now in Ontario, yes. Yes. having having this podcast. But if you embrace it, it's good. Google Calendar. If you embrace Google Calendar and use it for all of its purposes, it's really beneficial. So you have the ability to do things like it's amazing. I get excited talking about it because nope, there's so many real, little but... nuances about it that you can utilize Explain that it. people don't utilize. So in Google Calendar, you can set virtual right off of Google Meets. It'll allow you to do that. You can also set locations of meetings, which will set in the drive times for you. Google really? Calendar actually attaches to your Google Maps. So you can put a location in there. You can set reminder times, but automatically it does a half hour reminder for you. So as long as you don't click it off the reminder, it'll set it for you. You can do things like put in phone numbers, contacts lists, so you can generate that. It also will email directly people the invite. So you don't have to, you don't have to remember to do that. You just have to put their name in it and it does it for you. There's so many advantages to Google plus the interchangeable, uh, sorry, interconnectivity of it. So it connects to your email it connects to your calendar so you do everything from one calendar you put it in there and all of a sudden you have now a meeting reminder the location of it whether it be on virtual whether it be in person your directions to to go to the meeting yeah, if it's critical. in person all that kind of stuff is right there in your calendar there's a lot of things you can manipulate within the calendar as well let's say you want to do two reminders let's say you want to do three reminders if you want to make sure you have drive time available, if you want to make sure that your meeting is not back to back, a lot of people make a mistake and they'll schedule a meeting and they'll schedule a meeting right after. Well, you have no downtime in between that. What happens if you have to go to the washroom? Mm -hmm. What if you have to, if you have to need some water, what if you have to travel from one location to another? So, so you think of those kind of things. So there's a lot of process to schedule, but once it's scheduled, it's there, set it's it there, out it. of your brain, you're Stop. blocking time. Forget it. It's over. The other thing you can do is if you're working within a group of people, you can share access. So other people can see if you're busy or not. They can schedule meetings with you. It's very intuitive. This stuff has been around for a long time. It's, this is not brand new, but I've embraced it as what it, it's new to me, to my life. And I've embraced it. I did it. I did it when I was with law enforcement organizations. I've used it internally when I was with the city, when I was with the commission. I used it internally. There's a Outlook uh, is big within Microsoft Outlook is big within uh, corporate world. But now that I'm running my own business and running my own schedule, I've embraced Google Calendar and Google Meets and Google Docs. That's the other thing that's really cool is documents, sharing documents and working on documents together, uh, Excel spreadsheets, all that kind of stuff. Um, and you could do all that through Google. Um, which is incredible. It's great. It's a great tool. Shout out to Google. <laughs> so this is this is funny because I always have the battle of Google and Outlook. So, you know, previously when I was doing mortgages briefly, the firm I was working with, the brokerage was all Google and it drove me nuts. Mm. On the other side, Microsoft is nice, but it's like it's Microsoft and I'm then I'm an Apple user. So have you just decided that on all your platforms, your computers, your laptops, your 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 phones, your business, everything is Google integrated? Yep. So I have an Apple. Direction. I have app. I'm I use Apple, so I use Apple iPhone, iWatch, uh, Mac computer, but and I have Google's Google. been flawless. Google's worked yeah. on all of them. It's flawless, and it incorporates with everything. My phone, my watch. If I miss an appointment, it's because I chose to miss that appointment. Perfect. I get There's, it. There, it, it. It is your parent. It, it nudges you. It hits you on the head. It reminds you with an alert. You can't get away from it unless you just turn off all your electronics yeah. and decide to be away from it. There's so many reminders that it, that it sends you. It's incredible. So our it's our franchise is, is on Google. It's, it's all Google based. And uh, the problem I have right now, it's funny you bring this up because today I made a point of, uh, because things are ramping up. So yeah. I've made a point of being a lot more diligent with the calendar because we've both spoken about the importance of locking time. If it's not in the calendar, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Right. And so one of the challenges this morning was 
I got Outlook open and then I'm looking at Google. And I'm like, oh, like, where do you go from there? Right. Yeah. And, you know, do you use the Outlook as your inbox versus the actual login to Google on your computer and your laptop and your your phone? It's like trying to find that one thing instead of using an alternative email entry when you could just use Google's product. So this morning I'm, you know, making notes on things and I'm like, okay, you know, we're ramping up. We got to do stuff. Is the Google, Google the way it is, or is it going to be outlook? What are we going to do? <laughs> I, you know, at the end of the day, I think uh, it's, I think it's a personal preference. It there's is. Gonna be, it is. Cause there's going to be people who are probably listening or watching us and saying, Oh, Google sucks or Google's not as good as Microsoft outlook. And, at the end of the day, just use something. I think use that's what it comes yeah, down to. It, use something to assist you. I was having a meeting with another franchise owner the other day, um, and she's old school in relation to her calendar use, pen and paper. It's Love the, it. you know, I'd, I'm not going to shoot it down because no, it is, you know, tried, true, and tested. You have a pen, you have a paper. The problem is, and this is what I said to her, the problem is it does not remind you unless you look into that book. Yeah. So if you forget to look in the book or you don't have the book with you, you're not going to be scheduling something. And it doesn't send you a reminder because it's pen and paper. It's right. it's if you're diligent enough to make sure you always have your calendar with you, if you're diligent enough to open it up every day and write stuff in it, then it's perfect. And if you're that type of person, I I look at it as energy spent mind on my mind if it's if i don't put it in even my personal stuff i put in my calendar yeah otherwise i'll forget it if it's not in there i forget it because there's too much on the go there's it too many things to, you like, need to remember it goes back to even journaling um i've had a few people through the kind of the online coaching stuff i was doing and still doing i shouldn't say was uh still doing and uh, one of the one of the questions i had recently was like well there's so much happening i said you have to like memory dump you have to brain dump things so if it's a pen and paper that you do, that's the best way to journal and let those things flow out. If you need to put things in your calendar and you embrace technology, then type it in, use your phone, take advantage of that. Hey, Siri, do this, do that, you know, and, and plop it in. Don't yeah. be afraid to take those things off your mind because there's nothing worse than trying to remember things that you need to do or want to do and go, I'll remember it later. I'm telling you, you're not going to at all. Yeah. Never, you, you know, like you have to put it somewhere as a reminder. You have to put it, uh, as you say, you get those reminders automatically to mm -hmm. you because you're not going to remember. Like I, no. I'll tell you that for sure. I know I've made, made no. terrible mistakes, but I'll remember later, miss yeah. something. You and know? I, I actually don't know what I'm doing until I wake up in the morning. Yeah. Like I have a vague fine. idea. Like I think I, I, I say to myself, okay, I I'm pretty sure I have a couple meetings today, but I don't know. Yeah. My wife will constantly say to me, Natalie will constantly say to me, she'll be like, she'll be like, what are you doing tomorrow? I'll be like, I don't know. Let me check my calendar. So <laughs> yeah. I open up my calendar and I'm like, okay, I have a meeting at this time, this time, this time. And here's my day. This is what my day looks like. Yeah. But I couldn't tell you off the top of my head because it's, it's not, it's not important to remember because yeah. there's something there. I can spend my brain power on something else. Yeah. So that, that, that would be my advice to anyone who's looking to, if you're coming into this journey of business, find something that's going to assist you in technology these days, or it's just incredible, especially the way it's moving. Embrace with, the tech. Oh my god! Embrace gosh. the tech. Embrace it. Embrace yeah. it as much. You yeah. Don't fight yeah. it. Don't be like, oh, I'm old school. And blah, blah, blah. No, you can't. Just embrace it. Just accept so, it. An incredible tool that I was very kind of resistant to and all, maybe this will be, you know, a helpful hint, you know, a helpful tit, uh, tip for it. Tit. <laughs> Rated R. Uh, tip for someone is uh, is going to be using like, like artificial intelligence has been incredible. Mm, yeah. Um, so I've been having to redo some documents and, you know, I'm, I'm putting my best ideas out and using things like chat, GBTB, whatever it's called, you know, GPT. Thank you. Using it to see if anything it suggests is in alignment mm -hmm. with what you've already come up with and how you can expand. You have to embrace the technology because there are so many people. Yes, I understand why people are concerned, but if we use it um, to assist us in growth and to challenge us, do it. What upsets me is when I see maybe more so some of the younger generation, just here's my university essay, you know, right. that's where I'm like, yo, when Dave and I went to school and we went to university and college, we had to actually put our pen 
or sorry, our, our, our head to paper and, and go to the library and study and do the research. And I can see why it's upsetting to people because yeah. some people are using it as a scapegoat. Yeah. But in business, it has been very instrumental to allowing creativity and to allowing kind of that web of ideas to expand where you then can develop things for your business further. And so it's something I've been having to use recently because I'm embracing it going, hey, this works. It's 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 incredible. It's assisted me in not trying to focus so much energy on, did I cover the right thing? Hey, let's throw yeah. it in there. Let's see what other ideas we have and what gets yeah. populated. And it's been it's been a wonderful tool. It's a tool. Yeah. It's a tool, and that's that's the thing. It's a tool. It's not a resolve. The the slippery slope is, and as some people might know in the show, I used to be an instructor for CDI College teaching law enforcement students. So the slippery slope is there. If you go to ChatGPT and say, "Create me a um, create a essay for me based on this topic," and then it creates it for you because it'll do it within two to three three minutes. If you submit that as your own work without in taking it in, reviewing it, understanding what it, what it says, then you're not learning something. So that's that's the dangers of using chat GPT in like a schooling environment where you're submitting something, you're going to get an A on it, and then you graduate and you have this diploma, but you really haven't learned anything. Yeah, so that's, that's the dangers. The benefits of it are stuff like this. I used it about a couple months ago. I wanted to create a PowerPoint presentation. I had all the content. And I sat down to do a PowerPoint presentation and I'm probably two slides in and it's probably about half hour, 45 minutes that I've been working on it. And Natalie says to me, why don't you just use chat GPT? And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> she goes, use chat GPT to create your PowerPoint presentation based on the content that you already have. I'm like, Ugh. I was like, really, is it going to do something for me? Is it really going to work? You feel guilty. You feel I like do. I do. I was know? like, but I got to put in the work, but I'm already 45 minutes in. So I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me stop being a fossil here and let me embrace chat GPT or let me embrace this technology. So I end up going on it, type in all my information, copy and paste it from my document, put all the content in there. I say, create a PowerPoint within seconds. Yeah. It created the format for my PowerPoint presentation within seconds. And you're I've been working on this for 45 minutes and I'm three slides in and it did within seconds. I was like 20 some odd slides. Yeah. It literally yeah. has taken all your ideas and it's just incredible. formulated it into just beauty. You know, it's incredible, incredible, yeah. incredible. I, I encourage anyone out there in business to embrace this. It is such crazy technology. If you think of it on a grander scale, it, it is, is I'm not saying use it to cheat. Don't cheat use it to assist you in energy expending. Yeah. If I'm walking into a business meeting and I said, oh, geez, I forgot to do my presentation. I have all the content, but I didn't have time to do the presentation. Within five minutes, I can do a presentation, review it, walk into that meeting and display it onto their computer. Yeah, 100%. Incredible. It's an incredible tool. It's incredible. Yeah. It's yeah. incredible. It, I'm, it, I'm blown away every time I go onto ChatGPT to type in something. Do this for anyone who's listening right now. Go on to ChatGPT. It's free. Go on to ChatGPT, type in create a workout plan, five days, seven days, how many days you want it, involving weights or no weights. Type in something like that. It will push That's, out yeah. a great fitness plan for you. It's incredible. It's very intuitive. You can do you can do food. You can get it to create a shopping list of healthy foods for you. It's incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Blows my mind every time I see it. That's the problem. And it's just a distraction now. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. I already got a workout plan, but I like Dave's idea. Let's see what it's going to say yeah. for fun, right? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Something I, I want to throw into all of this conversation to, to kind of wind down the show for the next little few minutes is resiliency in business. So for those who are following, I've had, we've had so many setbacks on my end for business. So, you know, having a plan, executing that plan, and then watching things change in the economy and having capital that mm. was once projected to be there, gone, is not letting that moment define who you are and prevent you from going forward. Because right. 
we had exhausted so much effort into trying to find uh, an investor, a money partner, a lender, something to get us to the next level that we just having doors closed after doors closed after doors closed to the point where we were considering selling our business, being like, you know, we're going to sell it. We'll let it go. It's fine. That's a chapter in life. But things change. It's funny. And I had a conversation with someone I've known for, for a very long time. This, this individual super successful, very, very wealthy, multiple businesses. And I said, I said to him, I said, uh, I, I just getting tired of asking people for money in business. I feel guilty. I feel weird. Mm. And he goes, stop right there. He goes, you have to ask for money. It's one of the number one most important things you can be doing as a business owner is you have to learn to ask all the time. Businesses grow and require capital. Yeah. Finances grow and require additional capital. You have to be asking. You have to get comfortable with that. There's nothing wrong with raising capital mm -hmm. and asking people. So it was like a whole mind shift hearing that, right? So it's like, okay. And so now we are back at to, you know, making connections. And so it's funny because the resiliency of not giving up and pouting and being like, oh, it didn't work has led into kind of other doors opening. And so now we have some potential discussions with some other lenders for, for what we're doing. And it's like, okay, so if I gave up, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be here. Right. So for those out there who feel very stopped or yeah, that's not the word, who, who feel just defeated, remember right. that you're the only one stopping you. Right. Nobody else knows what's going on. You have to keep putting yourself forward and not giving up on what your ambitions or goals are, whatever it is that you're trying to do, including leaving the nine to five. And these are the down journeys that Dave and I are open to sharing that nobody talks about on social media or out there on the YouTube podcast, whatever space. So yeah. be resilient. Don't let the closed doors and the no stop you and just keep going. Ask for capital if that's what you need. Ask for help if that's what you need. But it's up to you and your mindset. That's why it's the Making Waves Mindset Show that will make a difference between being stuck where you are and hating life mm -hmm. or being where you want to be in the future. Yep. And I'm sure one day Dave and I will both look back at this episode or other episodes going, that was easy, you yeah. know, but it's it's just you're your own boss now. Mm -hmm. You don't have somebody telling you what to do every day. So you got to push forward. You got to be disciplined in in you know, continuing to open doors, checking every handle. Is it locked? Go to the next one. One of them is going to be open to get through. Yeah. The someone smart, the smart person in my life said to me, <laughs> if it was easy, <laughs> yeah, everyone would do it. 100%. Very true. I had a, I had a great quote I want to add in there, Dave, as we talk about this, because it was very instrumental at that moment when things were changing there a little bit. Kind of felt defeated. Where are we? Right here. Okay. It says, for those listening, get your pens and paper down. This Book is my distraction quotes. technique. <laughs> Actually, this is my new quote. I, I wrote this down yesterday. It's called, no one's going to do it except for you. So that's, mm -hmm. that's one I'll be posting in a few days. And then the other one was... Uh, before you go to the I other one. You, before yeah. you go to the other one. That actually reminds me of a, a small little story before we go. Back up almost a year now, because Stretch Lab has almost been uh, coming up on our year anniversary in October. Yes. yes. But about maybe 20, 30 people said to me, why you? Are you serious? I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I told them I'm opening Stretch Lab and we're the first in Canada, why you? That's what I got from people. Why you? How come you're the well, first? How come you're the first? <laughs> why 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 are you the first person? Yeah. So only you, only you yeah. can do it. It's 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 you, it's your mental roadblock, right? Mm -hmm. Um it's to tie in there, you have to find your perseverance, dedication, and commitment to improving yourself by moving forward every day, right? So it's another one of my quotes. Everyone thinks I'm weird. I just these ideas come like that's a good quote, brain. Like write it down, right? As we just yep. said, if you don't write it down, you're not gonna remember. But those two things have been very key. It, there's nobody that's going to do it for you. You have to do it yourself. So right. you're the only one that's going to stop you. So don't let the no stop you. Get going and have that resiliency. Don't, I don't, you know, the pity party. No. No one's coming to celebrate, especially not Dave and I. We won't be that's there. Right. No, no, no. You got it. <laughs> and by the way, you are weird, but you're a good weird. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks.
Dave. Well, all right. You know, if, folks, uh, thanks for thanks for listening. Thanks yes, for absolutely. chiming in. It's been a great, great episode. It's been a great episode to catch up on. Again, please leave a review. Please reach out to us. Ask your questions. What do you think? Are you keeping track of your time? Are you doing the calendar thing? Um, or are you struggling with perseverance and resiliency? So, you know, let us know in the comments. Reach out to us. Don't be afraid. Dave and I are there. Um, Dave, I almost forgot how we end the show. What, what do we say? It's something like continue to dream bigger, make waves, take action. I don't know. There it is. You just said Actually, it. you know you what? Just, you you, you didn't say at the it. beginning of the show. You yes, didn't I say if you don't like the show. Yes, yes, I said it. Did you say that? Yeah, we're going to have to go back to a, a instant replay. Share, share, share. And if you don't like an episode, share it with someone anyways, because they might enjoy it and they might learn something. This is where I do my editing. That's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, everyone. <laughs> Dream bigger. We'll but talk I will to you. say it. But I will say it. If you're enjoying the show, share it. If you're not, still share it. That's right. Send Sounds it good. out. Okay. Dream bigger, everyone. We'll talk to you on our next episode.